the identity and disappearance of the Saudi woman. It's a very serious title, I know. But in reality, most of my work focuses on, on this. This is sort of the underlying theme that uh, I always address when I approach projects because women have not been documented historically in my country, in a lot of countries, and the people who wrote history wrote it the way they wanted it to be written. And today there's encouragement of covering a woman's face, lowering her voice, uh, not saying her name, and I feel this instigates uh, forgetting and disappearance. In 2005, uh, our current king took the throne. And part of his speech, uh, he gave a sort of very hopeful talk about women and men both are gonna come together and build this country. I got very excited, a lot of women did. And after his speech, a dialogue broke out with journalists and opinion leaders about no, women are not going to work in all over the place. There's going to be jobs that suit her nature that she's going to work in. And it got me thinking, what suits my nature as a woman? And who decides what suits my nature? I am an educator. She's a professor. And what's written on the board is, ignorance is darkness. I concluded the whole collection with, I am a Saudi citizen, where I actually make a very obvious statement that I want to belong to this landscape. I want to belong to this society. For about a year, me and my mother would find these articles that talked about so-and-so woman won an award. So-and-so woman was gone to, went to a conference. So-and-so woman uh, donated money to a charity. And they would always use the same image, which is the black ghosts, the ones that have zero faces, zero character. And it wasn't that they did multiple pictures of these ghosts. They just used the same one. They didn't even bother shooting uh, different pictures of these black ghosts. And this document is um, the permission slip that every woman in Saudi Arabia needs to get from her male guardian in order to travel. My male guardian is my youngest brother. And I placed it on a fiberglass dove and then invited almost I sent an email out to a few women and asked them, would you like to donate your travel slips for an art project? So at that point, I was not very well known in Saudi Arabia, so I expected nobody would respond and give me such a delicate document with their information. And I was shocked to have almost 100 women donate their travel documents to go to this project because it was a statement they wanted to participate in. So you have some sitting and eating on the floor, some hanging out on the sides, and some floating in the sky. So in reality, what I was trying to sort of formulate is that Saudi women, when you look at them, you think they look like doves, they're floating in the sky, they, they're amazing, but in reality, they're suspended. There's a phenomena in Saudi Arabia right now. It's very fairly new, where and it's not something that comes from traditions. Young men will not say the names of their wives mothers, daughters in front of other men. It's something that they want to hide and, and it's shameful to pronounce it. So they would call their wives my family or the madame or any other thing, but not the name. And then I just posted on my website, do you want to be part of my artwork? 400 women across the kingdom responded and registered. So it was an overwhelming response. I didn't know what to do. I explained to them that the artwork is going to tour the world you're going to write your full name on a piece of bead with your own handwriting, full name, and it will be displayed. And we're going to be very proud of displaying these artworks. So women from all over Saudi. So I started a tour from the east to the west, and I stopped in three major cities. They started writing their names on these beads, and then finally they were displayed in Jeddah. So there was this wonderful energy in participatory art. And this is where art connects with um, general society.